Hey guys, Argyle Litigator here. Uh, that's the name I'm gonna go with because it seems appropriate for these law videos. Now, due to some responses posted on the defamation video that I had put up last week, uh, some people wanted me to go over fair use and copyright, and I believe that is relevant enough to YouTube for me to talk about. I know other YouTubers have made videos on this. My intent here is to break down copyright and fair use and help you understand how it's applied and how it's relevant to YouTube. Uh, I'm probably going to use examples uh, towards reaction channels because that seems to be a big topic on YouTube when fair use comes into play. I'm not a huge expert on fair use, so I had to do a little bit of research on understanding and breaking it down myself, but I think my knowledge of legality and legal terms is going to help me help you understand this. So before we begin to jump into fair use, uh, we need to talk about copyright. Uh, copyright is the overarching law, and fair use is the exception to that law. Now, in US law, there's rules. And there's a lot of exceptions to rules. And an exception more or less to the rule allows you to do the action that has been prohibited without suffering the consequences due to certain circumstances. And fair use is an exception to copyright. So let's talk a little bit about copyright before we go into fair use. Now, copyright is a huge, huge US law. So I'm just generally going to break it down what copyright is. Copyright is a legal right created by the law of a country that grants the creator of an original work exclusive rights to its use and distribution. Now, this use and distribution can be for a limited time, but it's basically for the intention of enabling the creator to receive compensation for their efforts in creating this content. Putting that in a little bit more of layman's terms, basically copyright gives you the right that if you create something, you have the exclusive rights to receive money for it because you put the effort in creating it. That's all copyright is generally. There's a lot of other laws. I'm not well versed enough in copyright law and to go into all the complexities of them. And we're only talking really about fair use here. So that's all we need to know. I just wanted to set a basis. Now, not only is fair use an exception to the copyright law, through case law, which is basically just, there was a case that went to court and the decision of the case created a standard. So due to case law, Fair use is an expressly authorized right, meaning that you don't have to enact it, you just have the ability to be under fair use if it meets the standards of fair use. Now, fair use is any copying of copyrighted material done for a limited and transformative purpose. And the transformative purpose can be anything like commenting upon, criticizing, or a parody, something that fits within that box would be considered transformative. There's a lot of things that go around on YouTube about fair use, and people use the word transformative a lot, and that's a big part of it, but fair use more or less is broken down into four factors. And before we talk about the four factors of fair use, I wanna make a distinction between elements and factors. In US law, when you're dealing with reading different types of standards, statutes, laws, rules, whatever you want to call them. There's a difference between elements and factors. Now, in the defamation video, defamation was decided by seven elements. Elements have to be met. Every single piece has to be met to make the claim. In the defamation video, defamation had seven elements. All seven of those had to be met or you could not pursue a claim of defamation. It just wouldn't hold up in court. Factors, they are things to be considered that contributes to the outcome. Not all of them have to be met. They can be weighed differently. Each one holds different value and they just have to be considered, but they might not meet all four and that's fine. That's the difference between factors and elements. So there's a lot of videos out there talking about fair use that explain these four factors. But I don't think a lot of people know the distinction that these are factors to be considered. They are not solid stone elements that have to be met for fair use exception to be in play here. 
So that's just something to think about as we go forward talking about these. As I've been foreshadowing this whole time, let's get to the factors of fair use. So the first factor here is the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes. Basically, you got to demonstrate how your use of the copyrighted material advances knowledge or the progression of the arts through the addition of adding something new. I believe this is where the word transformative comes from because it's considering the use of the copyrighted material. Now, courts in the past have determined that if it's for solely a commercial use, it's going to weigh in favor of finding no fair use. However, if the purpose was used to review or criticize, it's more likely to be considered fair use. So when we're talking about reaction channels and the purpose and character of the use of the copyrighted material, it's up to debate whether it falls within the bounds of this factor or not. As an example, if there's a reaction channel that's watching an animated short for the reaction, and say the short is 10 minutes long, they sit there saying nothing, staring blankly at the animated short, does that really qualify as a transformative purpose? It's up to debate, but I, I think most people and I think a court would likely agree that it is not transformative. As for the purpose of the use, is it commercial or is it to review or criticize? If they're sitting there saying nothing, I think it leans more towards commercial use because they are gaining profit of this. And if they're not saying anything, how is that used to review or criticize? Factor two, the nature of the copyrighted work. All right, the court is gonna consider certain aspects of the work to be relevant, whether it's fictional or non-fictional, published or non-published. And from case law, it's been determined that non-published works favor to be fair use over the use of published works. Now on YouTube, all videos are published. It says published on the video manager. When you put up a video, it is considered publishing a video. For all intents and purposes, all videos on YouTube are published. So back again in the example of reaction channels, they are using published works in their videos every single time. In the past, courts have determined that published works are less likely to be weighed fair use. I don't think it looks good for the case of reaction channels being fair use. The amount of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So basically all this factor is looking at how much of the copyrighted content was used in the new product. That's basically all it's looking at. And courts have ruled in the past that the less used, the more likely it will be considered fair use. However, the quality is also analyzed as well. So if there's a book and there's one chapter that's incredibly crucial to the entire book and the person uses that one chapter in their new product, that would be considered as well. If that one chapter is the most important thing, it's less likely to be ruled fair use. In the example of reaction channels, they use the entire thing, unedited, straight up. So this is definitely gonna be weighed less on the third prong here because they're not even using a portion. They're using the entire videos, unedited. So I don't think that looks good towards their case of being fair use either. The fourth factor is the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. The court is gonna look at if the use of the work has significantly harmed the copyright owner's market. However, the burden of proof rests on the copyright owner. The owner of the copyright brought a suit against the fair user, they would have to demonstrate how much of an impact that fair use affected the commercial use of the copyrighted work. I know there's a lot of words being used multiple times there, but it basically just says, if you use someone else's work and it negatively affects their market because of your use, it's going to be weighed against fair use. So in the example of reaction channels here, they are using videos on YouTube and putting them basically up on their channel, completely unedited, entire video. 
they are definitely affecting the potential market because being on YouTube, we are all in the same market. Granted, there's different genres, video games, parodies, uh, prank channels, what have you. They are still all in the same potential market on YouTube because the viewers are not divided into genres. And viewers most likely watch a myriad of different genres all across YouTube. So their use of the copyrighted work is most definitely affecting the potential market. However, a copyright owner would have to prove this because they have the burden of proof, not the person who's trying to claim fair use. Also, courts have stated that this is the most important factor in the fair use analysis. The biggest thing about copyright is that the person who made the content has the exclusive right to gain commercial benefits from it. If the person who's using this copyrighted material is impacting their market negatively, that's hurting them and that's infringing upon their right of copyright. So it makes sense that this would be the most important factor. Now there's other factors that the court can consider, one such being acknowledgement of a copyrighted source, if somebody uh, gives a citation, things like that. But I think these factors are considered just to weigh the scales if it's evenly uh, distributed between being fair use and not fair use. Because again, these are factors, not elements. I, I don't think it's heavily weighed. You can't just blatantly use someone's stuff and then cite it and it's going to be okay. You're still taking money from them, essentially. So I, I don't know. It's just they had a list of other factors and I felt it was important to mention it. So that's pretty much fair use. I hope this was informative to you guys, breaking it down piece by piece and trying to explain it to the best of my knowledge. I did have to research this topic myself uh, to get a little bit more antiquated with it. I'm not really that knowledgeable in copyright law, but I think it's an important thing to understand and know, especially going into YouTube. And to avoid any potential copyright or fair use issues myself, I have provided sources of my research uh, in the description below. So that's it, guys. Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a good day.